during the first phase. But in the second phase, you cannot use rational method. Okay? I repeat, you cannot use rational method. If you use rational method to, uh, to design the detention, it's wrong. Your project is going to get rejected and it's going to get debated by the client. represent the pre-development position and the other one is to represent a post-development uh, position. Okay? So this the first watershed is my pre, the second watershed is my post. Uh, where's my arrow button? This one? Uh, watershed, 
I'm just going to give it a curve number of 6. How about, how about that? Okay. You can squeeze this up. If your watershed has different uh, land users, you can directly say that if your pan uh, uh, acres is going to be uh, a certain land use, and then uh, 20 acres is going to be whatever, and so on and so forth, until you reach the 20 acres. Okay. So, for simplicity, I'm just going to use one curve number to show the point that. Now, once you're done with the curve number, you can move on to your regular uh, time of concentration specification. Okay? Now, for this one, again, you can get this from the overhead uh, uh, drawing. is to 
tell uh, uh, the, to tell the program what are the events that you want to model. Because if you think about it, you, design, you design your detection based on the largest event. However, when you design, when you evaluate your your outlet control structure, you have to design for all events that you're liable for. That's all the way from one year to one hundred years. So that that is to say, you're not only looking at one event ultimately. One event, yes, you design it, but then after you design it, you need all the events to, to look at your uh, uh, output structure. So, nevertheless, you put a, a, a rain gauge, okay? You, you hit, you, you click on, if either you click on here, or you click on this uh, uh, little cloud uh, with this little droplet rain, yeah? So you put it on here, and what I want to do is, I want to just use one rain gauge, because this is, yeah, okay, the exact same So I want to use the exact same range gauge to handle uh, both these areas that uh, I drew on that. Okay. So you click on that, and it will uh, give you that range gauge. And then you can click on that range gauge to tell it what type of rainfall you're going to have inside of your uh, uh, property. Now, if you recall, when we talk about the NRCS method, you know, there are several types of uh, rainfall depending on where your project site is located. Right? You have SPS type 1, you have SPS type 2, you have SPS type 1A, 1B, right? Whatever. So uh, now is the time to tell us yes, uh, where your, uh, 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 what type of rainfall that you want to use. So uh, it's embedded inside of this little uh, secret box with three dots right inside the uh, time series button. So you can click on that one. Bam. Okay. So now you have uh, 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 this uh, uh, box here that tells you what type of rainfall that you have. Now, it's empty now because you haven't specified anything yet. So go ahead and say, I want to add an event to this rain gauge. Okay? So once you, once you hit add an event, now all these uh, start to activate, and you have that opportunity to add whatever event you want. So uh, for, for discussion's sake, I'm going to add two events on here, right? Uh, just so you know how to do this. So you can uh, uh, click on the rainfall designer. So you want a standard because this is you know, the, the function of SPS is to standardize things, right? So you want to hit the standard, and now is uh, 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 the option. Now, uh, now you, you 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 have the option right in front of you, and you can uh, basically pick whatever uh, 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 rainfall uh, that your project site falls into, whatever whatever geographical location and rainfall type that your project falls into in in Georgia, right? 90% of the area is going to be type 2. Okay. When you go closer to the uh, coastal area, you want to be a little bit more careful. Yeah. You want to uh, look at the SPS uh, map to determine where that is. But 90% of Georgia, I, uh, I believe, or maybe 100%, maybe uh, 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 it, it can be described by the type 2 24 hour uh, rainfall. Okay. So I'm going to choose that. Now, once you choose what type, you need to choose what frequency, right? There are many frequency, one year, two year, five year, ten year, five year, six year, five year, hundred year, what else? So uh, in my case, let's say I want to choose one year. I want it more than one year. So I will uh, say, okay, this is uh, a one year event. So on here, you click the same thing, the only thing that changed is going to be that. And then you have a second event. So now yeah, you can add a second event. Let's say if you are required to do all the events, now you can add load all these events into your topic, into your rain gauge, so that when you simulate, right, you can pick which one, uh, pick and choose which one, which one you want to model first. Right? And then which event you want to come back to model. I load uh, uh, this, uh, I can say OK. Now, here's the thing. You created a rain gauge, but SPS doesn't know no rain gauge is supposed to supply to watershed 1, which is my pre-development, or watershed 2, or both. Right? So I need to tell SPS which, uh, uh, which watershed is the uh, rain gauge that I have specified to rain gauge 1. So to do that, I'm going to click on this, and that right, top right corner is where you specify Connectivity, I, I call it connectivity, right? Where you are going to tell how to 
choose your bottom shape ring gauge one, and close. Now you have ring gauge one assigned to both your pre and post development bottom shape. So now you are done with specifying the precipitation to your bottom shape. Well, okay. <coughs> so the next thing you want is to, to have a way for you to describe you know, uh, what the hydrograph looks like once you apply the precipitation to your bottom shape. So the way that I like to, uh, my preferred way, you're, you may have a different uh, preferred way, yeah, everybody does it differently. So my preferred way is first of all, I'm going to create a junction, regardless if I need it or not. Because if you create a node such as a junction, you can basically plot, later on you will see that you can actually plot a hydrograph on a node, but you cannot plot a hydrograph on a link. Right? Some people like to put a link, I don't, okay? because I don't know what's going on on a link but I can surely know what's going on on a node, okay? Now, when I put a junction, this is, this is actually not a physical junction, yeah? So this is just like a, uh, uh, a place where you can say, I want to probe all my uh, 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 you know, flow. That's my core point, right? I want to probe all my flow over at my core point, okay? So that's not a physical thing, it's more a virtual, like a virtual thing. So I'm going to put one junction uh, for each watershed, and if I want to plot my uh, my hydrograph for my watershed, I'm going to plot it based on that junction. Are we okay? We okay so far? All right. So now you have your notes. What's next? The program needs to know your watershed is connected to that node. Ready to go. All right. Yeah. You click on this. All right is your outlet node. So I want to say that my outlet node um, you know, is going to connect my watershed sub, sub basin one, in this case, to junction one. And same thing, if I want to do my sub basin two, I can surely click on here and choose junction two. And I have now connected my watershed with my nodes, with my nodes. Okay? Any questions? So you can see now that the progression that we, uh, you know, we did in class is exactly the same as the progression that you would uh, do in, 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 a, in fact, any hydrology, uh, hydrologic program okay, software. So the knowledge that you learned in class is applicable to every software. So you know, just to give you an example, right? I know at least one, two, three, four, four, four different softwares to do this. So they are all the same. Remember, you specify the time of concentration. With all these uh, 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 parameters, that is actually the parameter to your power point. If you think about it, that's how the program knows. Right? So it's irrelevant where I put my junction, the program knows because I specify the information as part of the uh, watershed feature. Yep, that's why I say it's only a virtual. Same thing. Okay? So I want to create uh, this scenario where uh, I forget to put my curve number. Yeah. So I'm going to create this scenario where I forgot to put my curve number. Let's see what happens then. Oh, it's still running. It just treats the curve. 
this number is zero. <laughs> okay, that's a bad example. Thanks. 
explain to you because you know, this is not my idea. This is not uh, from me. This is from the software, right? And I, I'm going to use the theory that you will just find. Remember what delta t over two means? What what does delta t over two means? What what is delta t? So that's how you uh, uh, yeah, associate that. 